Welcome to the Red Room, my friend. It's so good to have you standing by this evening. We give God praise for this day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God is faithful. All the time. And all the time. God is faithful and good, and that is God's nature. Amen. Praise the Lord for that ah, nature. Yes. You feeling happy? Me? Yeah. Yes, I'm feeling happy. Good. I just talked to Louie. I know. At Miracle Valley. And it was so good to talk with him and to uh, let them know that we love them and support them. And he asked me to remind everybody, if you want to check out what's going on, go to Miracle Valley Today on the web at Miracle Valley Today. And you'll be right up to date with everything that's happening. And he told me there's so much more has happened. How God's blessing Miracle Valley now. I can't, I can't wait to hear about it. I know. We're going to have to talk to him. Yes. Yes. Do you want to get started? I can get started. You have a lesson for us? I have a lesson. Advent. You know Ad what <laughs> you, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like a spray. If you have asthma. Asthma. Yeah. Try Advent. Yes. <laughs> I don't well, know where that came from. Well I think we should ask Carenza. There's probably one that sounds kinda like that. Yeah. So so let me see if I can get my get my bits and pieces here lined up. It's always a little difficult because, uh, well, because nothing's ever easy. You never dreamt when you built this room that you were going to be broadcasting from this room. Well, I sure didn't. The red room. But you knew from the time you put this room in that God's presence was here. Oh, that's true. In it a was special always way. here in a special way. Praise the Lord. And I, I can remember people saying, why are you painting that room red? That's not very restful. But it has always been a place of peace for me. It's always been a place that's uh, brought me comfort. And uh, and then and I did all my uh, studies in here. Uh my grandson, Rain, used to be rocked right in the corner right here. And it didn't matter how bad he was fussing, if you brought him in here and rocked him, he'd settle right down. And so this is just a special place. I think there's a, a godly stronghold right here. And we're grateful for this room. And now it's not a study room so much as it's a music room. The only bad part is, it's the room you come through when you come in the door, which means that every flat surface gets filled immediately with whatever we're carrying in. Right? Right. We know how that works. Well, we're into Advent, and then we began uh, Advent on Sunday with the lighting of our first Advent candle. Advent is a season of expectation. It means coming. We're waiting for the coming of the gift of the Lord. Um, and I'm, I'm pulling some things from a study that I had uh, from some of the Ken Copeland uh, writings. Romans 15 and 13 is one of the scriptures we'll begin with from the, uh, and it says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And Romans says, I pray that the God who gives hope, this is from the New Century Version, will fill you with much joy and peace while you trust in him. Then your hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. So as I said, on Sunday we lit the first candle, the candle of hope. And if there was ever a year, dear saints, that has required us to be intentional in our search for hope. It certainly is this year. It has been a pretty rough year for a, a lot of people. It's been a, uh, as we find ourselves in the middle of this horrible year, many of us have experienced reasons to have no hope. Or to have our hope cut out from under us. But 2020, in fact, has been what my grandmother used to say, was a doozy. She lived through the Depression. She lived through two world wars 
And yet I think if she had had to deal with 2020, she'd have called it a doozy. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah. We step into Advent, and you see, it's right for us, because we're people of God. It's right for us to look for and to expect the light of hope, the very gift of hope. So no matter what has happened in our world today, Jesus is our greatest hope of all. Jesus is God's Christmas gift to you. This year and every year and every day of the year and every moment of the year, there's only one stipulation. You have to accept the gift. And you don't have to wait for circumstances to be perfect. You don't have to wait for rainbows and butterflies to appear to get hold of this hope, to accept it and take it. You don't have to be in a place where you feel like you're worthy of it. But you deserve the gift of hope because it is our gift, a free gift through Christ. Let's see if we can do this. Okay. You see, it really isn't hoping for anything if it's something that you've already got a hold of or something that you already can see real bible hope believes in the promises that god has made in his word that's where you get your hope from not from the circumstances that are tumbling around you hebrews 11 and 1 tells us that faith is a substance and, and that substance is things hoped for. The New Century Version answers the question of what is faith in that same verse by saying faith means being sure of the things we hope for and knowing that something is real even if we do not see it. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, the prophet Elijah. Remember how he showed hope. He'd been beleaguered, living under a death decree from Jezebel. He sure wouldn't live in the dream, as they say today. And he received a word from the Lord that, that after three days, three years of a drought, three years of a drought, rain was coming. And God told him, you go and you tell King Ahab, this report that rain is coming after the three-year drought. And, and that is the King Ahab who, whose wife Jezebel was trying to kill all of God's prophets with Elijah pretty much at the top of that list. And he went. You know he had to go. He went because he knew deep within him that rain was coming and he knew it because God had said so. And that was enough for him. And he said, I hear a mighty rainstorm is coming. And you can go and read the story in 1 Kings and 18. But you see, when he went to the king, when he made that report, when he made that statement, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. There was no sign of rain. We know what to look for here in the mountains when we're when rains come in. We can sense it. We can smell it. We can watch the leaves of the trees begin to turn, and we'll maybe hear a rustling that that tells us the rain is coming. But there were no signs that the rain was going to come. And yet, and yet Elijah said, "I hear a mighty rainstorm coming." Now you see that's hope. And then he sent his servant to look, to go on over there to the top of that place and look out at that sky and tell me what you see. He did that seven times, and every time the servant came back and said, there's nothing in the sky. It's clear. Nothing at all. He said, go look again, look again, until finally there was the tiniest little spot, tiniest little puff of cloud in the sky. The scripture, one of the scriptures says, no bigger than your fist, if you held up your fist, a tiny little sky. Now I see that's expectation. 
We're in a season of hope and a season of expectation. And there you have a good illustration. Said, i got to ask you, how many times have you gone back to look for your promise? Did you go back the second time and the third time, the fifth time and the sixth time, the seventh time, maybe the twelfth time? How how many times have you been faithful yourself, looking for the hope that God has promised you? You've prayed and you've prayed, but have you listened and listened? Listened for correction. To see where you're out of line with God's will. Have you listened for instruction? Have you listened to that still, small voice? Because saints, all God is always talking. He's always trying to lead us. Can you hear him? Now this, Christ, this Christmas, as we walk through the Advent season, don't get too too ahead of this season. Don't let Christmas overwhelm us here. Determine to hope like Elijah did. Even if you're in a drought, even if you have the face of a crazy lady with a vendetta against you like he did. If you must. Check again. Look again. Seek again. Hope will come through. And hope always will shine a light on the situation that you're in. Hope can take something that doesn't make any sense. Something that hadn't been working. Something that seems totally hopeless. And doesn't that sound a lot like 2020 to us? It can take that and give it a new life again. It'll open to you the way where there seems to be no way. Hope will give you an audacity to, to confront the very thing that stands most against you because you have a good word from the Lord. And now you've got to wait a minute. Now we see what happened with Elijah. He had the good word from the Lord. And that gave him the audacity to step right in to the most dangerous place he could be and speak up on God's behalf. But, but here's the thing. If you want a good word from the Lord, if, if you want to know what has been promised to you, you need to take some action. As you spend time in this crazy season at the end of this crazy year with family, when you eat, when you shop, when you eat, when you decorate, when you eat again. You're going to need to take some time out of every day, out of that busyness and out of that routine and build your hope for the year to come. And the only way to do that, dear saints, is to spend time in God's Word. Now, I'm sorry to say there are a lot of people who are always looking for shortcuts to the goodness of God. But as gracious and kind and loving and as faithful as God is, the gift we are celebrating this time of year requires unwrapping. And you do that by searching out the promises for your life, praying and listening for his still, small voice. And there is nothing wrong with having high hopes. We have a God who is faithful. We have a God who offers us victory. We have a God of the impossible. We have a God who is a miracle-working God. But he is not Santa Claus. He's not a Santa Claus God. He is a king. He is a king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the bright and morning star, the fairest of 10,000. And our praise and our attention and, and our honor are due to him alone. And our devotion 
is required. Our time is required. And in the middle of such a crazy season, set aside time to contemplate on the gift that has been given. Take time to be grateful. Take time to realize where your true hope comes from. And your celebration will spring from inside of you. You won't need the trappings of the season. And in spite of the struggles of the season, you'll be able to rest in the reason for the season. Amen. Amen. That's a good study. He always has a good word. God's faithful. Absolutely. Hmm. I'm trapped like a rat here. No, you're not trapped. You know, that reminded me about the story of Naaman. Mm -hmm. Remember a servant of Naaman? Yes. A young girl. Servant girl of his wife, yes. Told him, because he was very ill, if you go to the prophet in my country, God will make you whole. That's right. And uh, a part of the thing that ties in with what you just said, whenever Naaman went, the prophet didn't even come out to see him. No, he didn't, did he? Oh, he had to be offended because he was a mighty man of valor. Right. He led many people in the military. Five-star general. There you go. And the prophet told him, if you'll go to what river? Ah, yes, yeah, see. And it's not a nice river like the river no. he came from. No. No. That dirty. Told him you go in that river and dip seven times. That's it. And God will make you whole. Not the first time. Nope. Not the second time. No. The seventh time. Seventh time. And when he came up the seventh time, he was made whole. Yeah. Took, took, took some pushing, though, didn't it? It took some pushing. But yeah. God set him free. I thought of an old hymn. Uh, well, Pastor, we're sharing you the word of God about Advent. Uh, we have an anchor in Christ, even in the middle of everything that's gone on today. God has not changed. Jesus Christ, the same today, to, uh, tomorrow, yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Listen to the words of this song.
I've never heard it before. No. No, I had to go find it. Ah. While you were talking to the folks. Ah. Let's have a word of prayer right now. Lord. Dear Jesus. I thank you for your presence. I thank you that in the midst of the great storms that happen in life, that we're anchored to that rock of ages. Lord, bless your people this night. Allow your word to stir in their hearts. The psalmist said, I have hid thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In the New Testament, you spoke to us and said, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. We thank you for your word this night. Bless your people. Minister to those who are in need. Minister to those who are suffering from anxiety during this time. Minister to those who have yet to confess you as their Lord and Savior. God, we leave this in your hands. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And we thank you for that anointing tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. One of our members was suffering from covid she has a compromised immune system, which complicates everything. And uh, she'd been to the hospital uh, first and went home, had to go back to the hospital, and they told her, you're bad enough along. You need to go to a big hospital. And they sent her to Morgantown, West Virginia, West Virginia, West Virginia University Hospital. Double pneumonia, this terrible disease it looked like was consuming her. And we began to band together and to seek the Lord. I believe in ministering angels. Oh, yes. And I commanded the angels of the Lord to go and visit her. Not even her husband could visit her. And we trusted Jesus. We received a message. And they had told her husband by phone when she survives this, she's going to have to have at least three weeks of rehabilitation. We get a telephone call, or we, we received a message, I'm sorry. And in the message, he said, the prayers of the people have interceded. My wife's coming home tomorrow morning. I saw him at a grocery store a little while ago this evening. That's a miracle. And I told him, I, oh, it's a miracle. I, I, I said, Kenny, I said, it's so marvelous what the Lord has done. I said, you know, it looks like a miracle. He said, Pastor, it is a miracle. He said, God raised up my wife as the people of God interceded for her. God is still a miracle-working God. He has not changed Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. I got you it right, that, right time. that time. Hallelujah. How about that? And I'll tell you something else. And I've said it and said it and said it, and I'll keep saying it. Never underestimate the power of prayer. That's right. I mean, absolutely. This is where our strength comes from, and we can, we can change the world more if we... Because our battle is not against flesh and blood. No. No, it's against no, principalities mean, and powers, powers, rulers of darkness in high places. Yeah. But prayer, that's where the, that's the game changer for us. Amen. prayer. And we have powerful prayer warriors, and uh, I praise God for them. Amen. I do have a quick announcement, which I should have made earlier. But, um... Because of what's going on and the uptick in cases here, it's crazy. Um, we have our, our we have one church that's been closed. Our other church is going to close for a time, and so we will be coming this Sunday live from the Red Room, mm -hmm. and uh, we're working on something pretty exciting for Christmas Eve. If indeed we have to keep our church doors closed, mm -hmm. we don't like it. Nope. But we are in the um, we are in a crazy place right now, mm -hmm. in a crazy state right now. I'm just saying. And God is there no matter what's Absolutely. going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. I want. I wanted to make sure people knew uh, to look for us on Sunday here. All right. All right.
chorus. I'd like to sing next. Simply says, oh, I want to see him. your hands to worship him but that's okay it's something that you need to try maybe you're sitting at home alone tonight you need to try it now if you're afraid of your family seeing you if you do it close your eyes and just worship him set my spirit free that I may
For he is so precious to me. the secret about what is happening in our lives is trusting him regardless of what is happening in our lives. Standing firm as a soldier of the cross because of the grace of God working in our lives. In the middle of it all, he will guide us he will lead us. He will protect us. He will use us for his glory. Praise the name of the Lord forever.
Be safe.